So the first thing that I'm going to test is the Ultra. Now, if I just come up to here and go to about this Mac, as we can see here, Apple M1 Ultra. And to be clear, this is only the 48 GPU core version. So let me get into Resolve here. Now I'm gonna go around a few things here just so we know exactly what's going on so that we can see when I go over to the Macs, everything is identical. So version of Resolve here is 17.4.5 build seven. Now this is not the very latest update. However, the very latest update would give us no advantages whatsoever for this particular project. The reason for showing you this version is because obviously I need to be using the exact same one on the Max, which I am, okay? Now a few more things to look at here. If I go into playback, there is no like optimized media. There's no proxies going on. Timeline mode is basically switched off for proxy mode and stuff. Uh, let's see, render caching, there is none. So what I'm pointing out here anyway is that there is no assistance with proxies or caching or anything like that. Fusion doesn't even come into it. Now, as far as the project itself is concerned, it is 4K UHD, uh, 60 frames per second. Now, getting onto the media. As we can see here, the source clip is ProRes 4444XQ. However, for this particular type of test and the nature of all this heavy processing, basically, as far as time is concerned, the source codec and like, you know, the exit codec, as it were, don't really come into play here as far as any like anything to do with like altering timings is concerned. But nonetheless, this is 4444XQ. And then if I just switch over here, what we can see down here is that I have got speed warp switched on as well, or optical flow and speed warp for the clip. Now, if I just go into the clip here, and if I go to change clip speed, as we will see, this is on 10%. So originally this clip is like a minute long, and effectively it's now like 10 minutes long. So it's got like a slowdown to take it down to 10% of its original speed. Now, as far as doing the like encoding and stuff is concerned, there's no way I'm gonna do the, the whole clip. So what I've got here is 20 seconds of the clip selected, because that's gonna be like, you know, taking long enough to do anyway. Nonetheless, what I'm gonna do at this point is just play the timeline and let's see if we can get any kind of indication to the frame rate as far as the response from the timeline is concerned. Okay, as we could see there, that was saying two frames per second. Now, the thing is, I've seen that say two and a half frames per second for this exact same test. The problem is, when you're talking like half a frame here and there, maybe the calculations are just not going to be that accurate. This is the reason why when we go to the export, we will get a much clearer indication as to what is going on as far as the frame rate for the export is concerned and the overall timing of it. So with that said, let me go to the export page now. So once in the export page here, I am using ProRes 422HQ as the export codec. Once again, you know, as long as I'm not using mad esoteric codecs here, the actual codec for the export probably won't even have any bearing on the speed either. Once again, due to the heavy nature of the processing for the timeline that's occurring. So things such, such as like, you know, decode and encode and stuff like that, they really do fall by the wayside when your timeline is consuming so much power and energy from the computer and stuff. Anyway, so with all that said, what I'm going to to do is pop that into the render queue there and I will start rendering. Now I'm not going to sit here and wait through all of this because this is going to take some time. However, I do need to get a final like timing for this. But as we can see now here, actually it did say two and a half, it says two and a half now. So this is kind of bouncing between two and 2.5 frames per second and it will kind of do that all the way through that timeline. So what I'm gonna do now is speed through this and then let's get to see what the end time is. Okay, as we can see there, the final time is eight minutes and 31 seconds just to encode that 20 second portion of the timeline. So now let me switch over onto the Macs. Okay, so I've now switched over onto the MacBook Pro. 
So what I'm going to do first of all is just show you on about this Mac. As we can see here, it says Apple M1 Max. And again, to be clear, this has got the 32 GPU cores. So what we're comparing here is the Ultra with 48 GPU cores, 20 CPU cores, and also 64 gigs of RAM compared to what I'm on right now, which is obviously the M1 Max, which has got 10 cores of CPU, 32 cores of GPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM as well. So it's quite substantially less as far as all those numbers are concerned. In fact, it's half and most of it except for the GPU cores. So what I'm going to do here is come to DaVinci Resolve. Now what I'm going to do is go back over the overview of all the settings again. And this is just so that we can see once again that this is the exact same project with all the same settings and everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to here and go to about. As we can see, 17.4.5 build 7. Once again, it is not the most up-to-date version. However, it is the same version that I've used on the Ultra as well. And then if I come up to playback up here, as we can see, there's no optimized media, there's no proxies, uh, there's no like, well, timeline proxy mode is switched off. There's no render caching and stuff like that. And of course, fusion isn't being touched or anything. Now, let me just go to the actual project settings here. As we can see, once again, this is 4K UHD and it is also 60 frames per second come out of there and then what I will do is go to the actual media here in the inspector just make sure it's highlighted and once again it is 4444XQ 60 frames per second so it is actually the exact same media clip anyway as we can see by its name and stuff and then if I just click on the video tab here what we will see is that I'm using optical flow speed warp once again applied to the clip and then if I come down to the clip itself, and if I have a look at the change clip speed, once again, it is at 10%. Effectively, what this is doing is taking one minute and stretching it to 10 minutes. So 10% again, as it was on the Ultra. So let me come out of there. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is just play a bit of the timeline here in preview mode, just so we can see exactly what this is like on this system. So here we go. Okay, now as we can see there, that's only registering about 1.5 frames per second. It even dropped down to one frame there at, at some point as well. But basically 1.5. Now, of course, the response there in the timeline is what we really shouldn't be measuring anything by. So, of course, what I'm now going to do is go to the export page. And once again, I've selected just uh, the 20 seconds there as I did do with the ultra export I've called this one max uh, just so I know what it is when I have to go and delete it again and once again as we can see it's the same code that can everything which is Apple ProRes 422HQ so let me just add that over to the queue and then I will click on render all now just before I go ahead and speed through this until it finishes if we have a look up here we can see here that this is saying 2 to 2.5, and then it's dropping down to 1.5. If we have a look at this anyway as it speeds through, we'll probably see those numbers. There we go. It's gone down to 1. So this is a lot more random with what it's saying it's doing as far as the frame rate is concerned, as far as the actual processing is concerned. Uh, nonetheless, it is definitely is not going to be anywhere near as fast as the Ultra, regardless of whether this goes up to 2.5 or not. So what I'm going to do now is just speed through this and let's get to the end timing. Right, I'm actually just going to cut in here really quickly just so you can hear the noise coming off the MacBook Pro right now. So I'm going to go quiet for a few seconds. Okay, so hopefully you should have heard very clearly there that the fans have now ramped up on the MacBook Pro. That's something that I didn't hear on the Ultra, and I didn't mention it because I didn't I didn't hear it kick in. The Ultra does, however, make noise anyway, and its fans are always on. And you can actually hear them quietly in the background, but nonetheless, when it was doing the same task, its fans didn't, like, you know, turn up any, any faster or anything, or at least it didn't go louder. But as you could clearly hear there, though the macbook pro does actually ramp up its fans and stuff and it is very audible as well anyways let me just continue and speed through to the end for the timing
Okay, so that took 12 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, so as far as an end summary is concerned, I'm gonna do this really quickly. And the reason why is because I don't personally wanna go deep diving over these differences here, because I'm more interested in what other people have got to say about it and what their interpretation of these numbers are. So basically, the Ultra done this in eight minutes and 31 seconds, and the Max done it in 12 minutes and 43 seconds. Now what's actually interesting about those particular numbers is that it's telling us that the Max took basically one and a half times the same amount of time that it took the Ultra to do the same task. Now of course the differences between the Max and the Ultra will vary depending upon the types of processing and the effects that are being used if you do something similar which is identical on both of the systems. However, in this particular test, I think what's going on here is that we are actually using mostly the GPU. And the reason why I say that is because on my monitor, which I don't really trust anyway, however, it did kind of suggest that the CPU wasn't really being touched there. So like I say, when it's GPU, maybe those differences there are what you should be expecting. Well, if it's CPU, it's gonna to be totally different, obviously, because we've got twice as many CPU cores. And just remember, in this particular test, we were comparing 32 GPU cores to 48 GPU cores. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. However, please do let me know in the comments what your interpretation of these numbers were. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.